6.4 is going to take us back to more of the proof concepts from the first part of this course. So just like we had theorems for proving congruency, we are now going to have theorems for proving similarity. And our first one is angle-angle similarity. In two triangles, two triangles are similar if and only if two angles of one triangle are equal to two angles of a corresponding second triangle. And so our picture would look something like so. If we had triangle ABCD and tri tri or ABC and triangle DEF, if we knew something like this, we could conclude these two triangles, triangle ABC, similar to triangle order matters, EFD by angle angle similarity. Our second similarity triangle looks a lot like one of our congruence ones, and that is side, 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 except in this case we're talking about two triangles are similar if and only if all three sides of one triangle are in the same proportion to the corresponding sides of a second triangle. So in our picture, instead of being able to mark congruence on the sides, we're going to actually end up writing something like this, that AB corresponds to DE in the same ratio that BC corresponds to EF in the same ratio that CA corresponds to FD. Therefore, the triangle ABC is going to be similar to triangle DEF by side, side, side similarity. Our last similarity theorem also looks familiar in the fact that it's side, angle, side. So in this case, we're talking about two triangles are similar if and only if two sides of one are in that same proportion to the two corresponding sides of a second and the corresponding included angles are equal, keywords. So if we are looking at triangle ABC again and triangle DEF, F, and you are given something like this angle and this angle are equal, remember those sides that make the angle are the ones that would be in consideration here. So we would need to know that angle D is equal to angle A and that side CA is in proportion with side FD at the same rate that AB is in proportion to DE. Therefore, our triangle ABC be similar to triangle D E F by side angle side similarity. These examples are going to look just like our congruence ones. Are the following following triangles similar? If they are, give the similarity statement and the reason. If not, explain why. Number one's a picture is a picture we use with congruent triangles all the time. Butterfly picture, I always have vertical angles. If I have parallel lines in those butterfly pictures, that means I'm going to have alternate interior angles from either that transversal or alternate interior angles from the other transversal. Either way, I have enough for angle-angle similarity, and I'm talking about triangle FGU being similar to F corresponds to P, G corresponds to J, and U corresponds to U. Now in picture two, I know angle 35 to angle 35, right angle to right angle, so I have another angle-angle similarity. Here I'm talking triangle ABC, is similar 
to triangle, A corresponds to T, B corresponds to R, and S corresponds to C. Now example three, potentially the only reason I have is side, 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 but I have to make sure that those vertices or that those sides are in the correct ratio. There's no marking to tell me what order things go in, but common sense says the biggest side in the biggest triangle should be proportionate to the biggest side in the smallest triangle. And I'm going to work through using that kind of logic, medium side to medium side, until I've completed all of my ratios. Then I'm either going to go to my calculator or my brain and reduce my fractions and see if I am talking about the same ratio and indeed I am. 20 eighths have a common factor of 4, 15 6 has a common factor of 3, and 10 fourths has a common factor of 2. This example is just a straightforward example of proportions. Triangle CAF is similar to triangle BDF. Set up your proportions, cross multiply, problem solved. Now one of the things we can start to explore here is that there is more than one correct way to set up your proportions. In this case, I took hypotenuse compared to hypotenuse over leg compared to leg. And that's what I get. It is also okay if you take the measurements of triangle CAF, hypotenuse compared to leg, and you set that equal to the measurements from triangle DBF, hypotenuse compared to leg. And where you'll see it all even out is when you cross multiply, because when you cross multiply, you'll get the exact same equation. And that's when you know that you're fine. If you cross multiply here, you'll see you'll have 20 times 2x minus 1 and 12 times 2x minus 2. So you will get the same equation. Distributive property, distributive property. Now I'm going to subtract 24x from both sides and add 20x from both sides. And I will come up with that for an answer. Now the tree shadow problems, very common algebra problem or trig problem, geometry problem. It's got lots of complexities, lots of different ways you can apply it and study it. In this case, it's a straightforward proportions problem. I have the height of the tree over its shadow is equal to the height of the man over the shadow. Simply cross multiply and we find out that x is 15. So a lot of words for a very simple problem. But things would not be fun unless we talked about proofs again. So we are going to revisit our proofs. You're going to find that a lot of our reasons are the same and just a few little twists. Now this problem initially looks very complex. The given is straightforward. I've done that before. But this prove line looks very complicated. So working it backwards, that prove line looks like my cross multiplying answer. And if I've cross multiplied, that means I probably set up a proportion. If I set up a proportion, that probably means I had similar triangles. So I need to prove my triangle similar. But when I look at this, there's lots of triangles in this picture. So this AE and CE give me an idea that I'm talking about that triangle. And if I look for BD and DC, B, D, and D, C, I can see I'm talking about that triangle. Now, to make things more clear, I'm going to slide them out and redraw them. And I'm going to leave them at the angles they are so that I can clearly see what I have. This will help me see what similarity statement I'm supposed to use. Now I'm going to go to my given. 
and see where I can go. Triangle. ABC is isosceles. Angle 1 and angle 2 are right angles. Given. Now we know to start with the given. ABC is isosceles. Back to the big triangle. When I trace and look at my big red triangle, isosceles triangles equal sides. Equal sides don't help me because BA isn't part of my similar triangles. But I do know that base angles of isosceles triangles are equal. And that is helpful. And so I'm going to say that angle A is equal to angle C. That is by the isosceles triangle theorem. The other piece of given that I have is that 1 and 2 are right angles. This one and that one. And what I can do to go from words to that number sentence is I can say angle 1 is equal to angle 2 is equal to 90. And that is the definition of right angle. Now I have enough information to say my triangles are similar by angle angle. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to say that triangle ECA is similar to triangle E corresponds with D, C corresponds with B, A corresponds with C by angle angle similarity. Now in congruency proofs, our next line would have been that CPCTC, corresponding parts of congruent triangles. But I don't have that. But what I do get from similar triangles is that those ratios are true and that the other angles are equal. Since my proof line has to do with the ratios, I'm going to set up that ratio with AEBD and CE and DC. So working very carefully, I'm going to say that AE is proportionate to DC at the same rate that CE is proportionate to BD. And that is by definition of similar triangles. Once I'm to that point, all I have to do is cross multiply, and I have AE times BD is equal to DC times CE, and that is cross multiplication. And that 